It's one of Islam's holiest sites, the holiest site to Jews. Israeli police stormed the Al-Aqsa compound, saying they want to prevent riots hours before the start of the Jewish New Year. Palestinians called it aggression against the faithful. So why is a holy place, time and time again, a place of tension? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Sami Zaydan. Israeli police have fought with Palestinians at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in East Jerusalem one week after the Israeli government banned Muslim civilian guards from the site. Israeli police say they entered the compound to prevent riots and arrest young Palestinian stone throwers. But Palestinian witnesses say the police entered the mosque at dawn firing stun grenades and rubber-coated steel bullets injuring people who were praying inside. Well, the Al-Aqsa compound is an important holy site for both Muslims and Jews. And it's become a deeply contested place where Palestinians and Israelis are vying for ownership and control. Scott Heidler explains. Early morning clashes at the Al-Aqsa compound in Jerusalem. Israeli police entered the compound, they said, because they needed to arrest stone-throwing uh, Palestinian youth who were in the compound area. Um, but then it escalated and they went all the way into the mosque. There were stun grenades that were thrown into the Al-Aqsa mosque. That lasted for a while. Tear gas was also used. The area was then uh, cleared by Israeli police, but there were still some minor clashes that carried on throughout the old city. Now, this is obviously a tense uh, part of the old city, but it's also during a tense time. That is because it's the beginning of the uh, Jewish New Year at sunset on Sunday. Many more Jewish people try to go into the Al-Aqsa compound. That obviously raises tensions. I've also seen over the last couple of weeks, um, right-wing uh, Israeli um, worshipers will try to get in and pray, and that is illegal. They're not allowed to do that in the Al-Aqsa compound. So uh, the tension has been elevating over the last couple of weeks. Also, a couple of uh, Palestinian groups have been outlawed by the Israeli administration. So that, too, could have added to this tension. Uh, it lasted for a couple of hours, went onto the streets of the old city, but so far has remained calm. Let's bring our guests into the discussion. In Ramallah, we have Mustafa Barghouti, Secretary General of the Palestinian National Initiative. And in Tel Aviv, Mordecai Kedar, Senior Lecturer in the Department of Arabic at bar -Ilan University. Good to have you with us. If I could start with Mustafa. The decision by Israel to ban two civil Palestinian groups, the Murabitun and Murabitat, is that a prudent public security move or a provocation? How do you see it? This has to do nothing, this has nothing to do with security whatsoever. This is an aggressive action against freedom of uh, religion, freedom of the people who want to pray. And it is an additional step by the Israeli side to change the reality inside the Aqsa Mosque. But Mustafa, the, Israeli, the Israelis would say that these groups get in the way of Jewish visitors to the Haram Sharif compound. Their tactics are aggressive. Will they allow Palestinians to visit the Western Wall, for instance? Of course not. Will they allow me to pray near the Western Wall? Of course not. Why do they want to bring Jewish visitors inside Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is a Muslim holy place, if it, is what, if it was not for provocation? Today's incidents were all related to the fact that a most extreme minister in Israel, a settler himself, who is violating international law, Ori Ariel, who is a minister of agriculture, tried to repeat the same provocation that Sharon did before in Al-Aqsa Mosque and provoked the people by entering the mosque with a crowd of people. The question is, why me, the Palestinian, and most Palestinians, 95% of the Palestinians are prohibited from entering Jerusalem? I was born in Jerusalem. I worked as a medical doctor in Jerusalem, but they don't allow me to go to the mosque, and they don't allow me to go to Jerusalem itself. And now the Jerusalemites themselves are not allowed to go to pray in the mosque from the morning till noon. This is an effort to change their facts on the ground. This right. is an effort to change the reality on the ground. It's one way of Israel's 
imposition of a system of racism and raci racial discrimination against uh, the Palestinian okay, people. This is another step right. towards consolidation a system of apartheid. Okay, let me let me bring in uh, uh, the view of our guest from Tel Aviv. There's obviously a lot of history to get through whenever you do a show like this. But what I really want to do first of all is to try and focus on on one issue, Mordecai, and that is why did Israel feel the need to ban these two civilian, they are civilian Palestinian groups, they are uh, act as security guards, they would say. They're not armed. Why did Israel feel the need to ban them all of a sudden now? It's not all of a sudden. They are for months are bothering tourists and Israelis, and not only Israelis, because they think that Al-Aqsa belongs to Islam since the creation of the world. They, uh, after they, uh, they occupied the, the territory of the Middle East in the 7th century, they occupied the history and they occupied the theology. Look, we were, we Jews, we were in Jerusalem worshipping uh, uh, the, the God 3,000 years ago when those fathers, the forefathers of the Muslims were worshipping idols and idolaters in the desert when they were drinking wine and liquor, Nabiv, and they were burying the daughters alive. They don't recognize the Jewish uh, 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 history. They destroyed uh, uh, Jewish uh, remnants in 1999, just like what they do I, today I, I in ISIS, in Tadmor. The same I idea, because uh, Muslims think, Muslims let, let me jump think in that if you Jews... Allow me, if, you, if you allow me, because I interrupted Mustafa, and I just want to keep this a little bit focused, if you don't mind, Mordecai. No. Um, Mustafa would say, as we heard him there, that no, no, Jews are sir, able is, to, no, to pray at the Western please Wall. Please let me finish. Why, no, no. why is there a need for Jewish visitors to go in to the, what the Muslims call Haram al-Sharif, the area around the mosques? Because this is the place of our temple, where, which David and King Solomon built. And even the old Mufti, the Hajj Amin al husseini wrote it in one of his books that the Tcharm Sharif is the place of the old temple which Solomon, King Solomon, the Jewish, the Jewish king of Jerusalem built 3,000 years ago. And now they deny. You know why? Because they think that since uh, Judaism is void, din al battle, as they say, while Islam is the only real, uh, real religion, now because we came back to our country, we came back to our place, Judaism will come back to life. And what will be the Islam? Because Islam considers itself as din al haq while Judaism is only dinner battle, means void religion. And let me show you something which the PLO produces. They say, they say Al-Quds Lana, uh, Jerusalem is ours on, the, on this side of the scarf. On the other side, they say, they, they show Palestine entirely. Because in their view, when they have Jerusalem, they will have all Palestine from the sea to the river. And this is why the struggle over Jerusalem is actually the struggle over Israel entirely. And they okay. do not let All right. us go to our holy place because they deny any connection between the Jewish I'm, people I'm and this land entirely. Mr. Mordecai, when you say our holy place, then it sounds almost like you don't recognize that there is a Muslim holy place on uh, what Jews call Temple Mount and what Muslims call Haram al-Sharif. Do you yes, recognize that there, there is, is a Muslim there, holy yes. place? No, no, I don't deny. Okay. No, no, I don't deny. I never denied. Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is mentioned in the Quran, not Jerusalem. Jerusalem is not mentioned in the Quran. Al-Aqsa is mentioned, was in this di the times of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was near Al-Ji'rana, between Mecca and Taif in the Arab Peninsula. Mm. The, it was brought to Jerusalem only in the year of 682 in the rebellion of uh, yeah, Abdallah ibn Zubayr, who, who blocked right. the way to Mecca. Okay, and so the people, Mordecai, in, in, I'm the, the people in Damascus a, chose you're Jerusalem getting into, to, be, me, you're to be an into alternative place for pilgrimage. Right, There's you're getting thing. into a, a, a lot of uh, version, I should say, of history no, no, here, which I'm trying to This is the Islamic history. The discussion away from a sort of Sir, argument no, no, over no, this is the Islamic, ancient This is the history. Islamic history. Uh, Dr. Mustafa, how about, I think the gist, if I could summarize there, that uh, what we're hearing from Mordecai is that this is also a holy place for Jews and that perhaps Palestinians are the ones of the Muslims who are not so accommodating to the desires of Jewish visitors who would like to not to come and visit and perhaps even pray uh, in Haram al-Sharif compound, the Muslim compound. 
Well, thank you. I will try to respond in a calm manner to a uh, verbal presentation, which to me sounds like nationalistic and racist, unfortunately. And I hope I can respond quietly. First of all, the map that Israel distributed is a map of the whole of Palestine. Islamic history. And they call it Israel. And it also includes, don't, 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 please, uh, uh, please, I okay, respected he, you. I heard you to the end. So don't interrupt me, please, if you can be polite. Israel's maps include not okay. only the West Bank and Gaza Strip as well, but also the Golan Heights. And these are occupied territories. This is first. Second, there is no, no places contested here. We don't deny the Israelis or the Jewish people the right to pray at the Western Wall. They can do that. And I don't want to go and pray there. But why do they want to enter in the Palestinian and Muslim site and pray there? They are violating a situation that has been there for hundreds of years. They say they have been here 3,000 years ago. Our ancestors were here 4,000 years ago. But why do we go into this race in history about who was here first? The question here is, can we live together and coexist in peaceful manner with respect and with equality? We say, yes, Al-Quds Lana, Jerusalem is ours. We mean East Jerusalem as they talk about West Jerusalem. They can't have West Jerusalem and East Jerusalem at the same time. And they know very well that there can be no Palestinian independent state Why? unless East Jerusalem is the capital of that state. That's, that's one point. The other point is that but Mordecai is asking you why. What the Israelis are Can doing I get you to respond the mosque, to, to that, uh, if I may, Mustafa? Mordecai is asking why you why. To what? Why can there not be an What's independent Palestinian state without Jerusalem as its capital? I think because was the Jerusalem, why was... without Jerusalem, there can because because Jerusalem is a very crucial part of the occupied territories. The question here is not about two sides disputing over a piece of land. <laughs> it's about one side occupying the other, one side oppressing the other, one side practicing apartheid and racism against the other. I'm asking him. I was born in Jerusalem. I worked in Jerusalem for 15 years as a medical doctor. Why do they have the right to prevent me from entering Jerusalem and visiting my sister? OK, there? let's take Why? that question to By Mordecai. Uh, hang on, let's why give more the kind of chance then. Palestin why 95% okay. of Palestinians are prohibited from going there? Let's let, give Mordecai a chance to answer that. That doesn't make sense, does it, Mordecai, to most uh, viewers or observers of the situation? Look, a person who's born there can't enter, can't practice his uh, profession or religion there? Look, it's, it's very, they're very easy. As a person, yeah, no, as, they as don't a, allow very me easy to go. Answer. They don't even as a give person, me a permit. Mustafa, Mustafa let's give Mordecai allowed. a chance to answer, Mustafa. We'll come back to you. Please, go you ahead. Know what? You know what? I, I will arrange for you. I will arrange for you a permission to come to Jerusalem. We can meet on a cup of coffee in Jerusalem, no problem. You can't. The problem is that Jerusalem was you not cannot. for one single day. I promise you, day, you cannot. And I challenge Jerusalem you to appear on TV and say that. Okay, okay, uh, okay, okay. Let's give Mordecai. But isn't the point, Mordecai, Thank that you very much. He, he shouldn't need uh, a special Jerusalem, permission from you. He should be allowed to do it naturally, yes. should he not? Right. It, he had until 2000. Ha, however, uh, because he had a VIP card. However, uh, Jerusalem was not, for, one, for even one day in history, a capital of anything connected to the Arab world or the Islamic world. Not for even one day. So to say that there cannot be a Palestinian state without Jerusalem, when was it a Palestinian state? It was never a Palestinian state. Why, why can it be in Ramallah? Why can it be in Azariah? Could be in so every, can every, we be in There was never state? a Palestinian state. So how come Jerusalem? This is one thing. This Sorry, is one Mordecai, thing. but the question he put to you is why shouldn't Jerusalem he be allowed to enter Jerusalem, heart. practice his religion there, and practice his profession? Let's not let's stay away from too much of ancient history when, and when whose there capital is it peace, was and wasn't. When the Muslims, it's very easy. When Muslims recognize the right of Jews to live in Israel on their forefathers' land and to live in our forefathers' city, Jerusalem, not Al-Quds, Al-Quds is a new name, a Jerusalem as it was for 3,000 years, then peace can come. So far, they don't recognize the Jewish nature of the country. They don't recognize our right on our land, on our city, on our land, because they think that Islam came to the world to replace Judaism, not to live side by side with Judaism and Christianity, by the way. Just to prove you, on the Temple Mount, there was a church. 
until the seventh century. The Muslims destroyed it and they built and they built the, the, the Dome of the Rock on the ruins of this church, just like they did in Egypt. Thousands of churches were turned into mosques. The same thing happened in Ramla, the same thing in, in, in Damascus, the same in Hagia Sophia okay. in uh, Istanbul, so, the same sorry, thing Mordecai, in Spain. We're, we're Everywhere getting into, Muslims went right, and destroyed, we're getting into a, destroyed we're getting into churches a lot and synagogues of historical, to build mosques. And this is exactly how they right, We're getting into a lot of historical debate about events in the past. As well. Mordecai, if you don't mind, let's try and focus on, you still really haven't addressed but this the is question facts. of but this why affects. somebody who is born in Jerusalem can't enter, can't practice his religion, and can't practice his faith and his profession, even if in your understanding of the Muslim world, which might be, shall we say, slightly debated about what the feelings are of Muslims towards recognizing Jews and their rights, but even assuming everything you've said is so correct, tell you. isn't there a, a, still a question here? I, why does this individual, and many like him, why are they unable to enter the place they were born in and their forefathers were born in. Yes? I will tell you exactly. Three months ago, there was the month of Ramadan. And during the Ramadan, Israel allowed, allowed buses, thousands of thousands of, of people from the West Bank, or the so-called West Bank, to come to Jerusalem to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Only but what did the people Ramadan do? They went to the malls people. in order to buy. After three days, they stopped it. After, after three days, they stopped it because all the dealers in Ramallah, in Hebron, in uh, Nablus were complaining that all the customers are running to Jerusalem to buy in Can the I malls. Respond, so the Palestinian okay. Authority stopped right. those buses which Israel allowed. And this is what happened because of money. They want the money of the people, so they don't want them to go okay. to Jerusalem. All right. And they stopped okay, Mordecai, all the buses you've, you've from made coming point. to Jerusalem during the Ramadan. I'm not Maybe sure this is the reason why Mustafa right. Mahmoud came. You've made come. your point. not sure you answered the point. Let me give Mustafa a chance because I can see you're angling to get in. Go ahead, Mustafa. Well, I'm really sorry for Mr. Kedar because of his racist language. His uh, language is very racist, and uh, maybe he doesn't recognize how incompatible such Don't you have anything else to say about this? The of Palestinians is with the 21st century. And don't be aggressive, sir. Let me speak. I allowed you to speak. Second, you are trying, and he is trying, to make it a religious okay. war. This is not a religious war or a religious fight. It is a struggle of Palestinians who are occupied, oppressed, no. who have been dispossessed from their land. They are struggling for freedom. We are struggling for our independence. That's why so many countries in the world support us. That's why so many countries in the world recognize Palestine. And that's why so many people in the world are joining boycott, divestment, sanctions against the policies of Israel, not against Israeli people but against the policy of occupation and oppression. You have made of Israel another apartheid system like South Africa. And by doing so, you are not serving neither the interest of the Palestinians nor the Israelis themselves, in my opinion. The big question what, here, what about Mustafa, if we are not the, allowed to have an independent Palestinian made, state that, that is, includes Al-Aqsa Mosque and that includes, give, let, me, let me finish, please. If we are not allowed to have a Palestinian state in the West Bank and Gaza and East Jerusalem, in this little tiny space, which is only 22% and less than half of what we should have had according to the UN resolution, if we are not allowed to have two states, then okay, let's have one state. Let's be all equal citizens in one state with equal democratic rights. I want to have full equal rights. That's Mustafa. You, on that point, Mustafa, no right to can I get you to respond on a point which you Mordecai have no right made? To oppress me. Mustafa, and, Mordecai and said that no right, part of the problem is that the Palestinians don't have that willingness, or Muslims in general, I think, if, if we take his general narrative there, don't have that willingness to recognize Jewish rights. And that's why Palestinians, perhaps people like you, are being deprived of well, theirs. Well, this is not true. I'll give you the proof. In 1993, when Oslo Agreement was signed, the PLO, headed by Mr. Arafat, recognized Israel as a state. The Israelis on the other side did not recognize Palestine as a state. They only recognized the PLO as a representative of the Palestinian people. If they had, if they had implemented the agreements, we would have had a state long time ago and there would have been peace here. But they don't want to allow two-state solution. They don't want one-state solution. They want to continue the oppression, the reflection of which we saw today by, by beating and injuring 102 Palestinian prayers inside the mosque 
and beating even two members of the Israeli Knesset just because they were Arabs. Right. This is unacceptable behavior. Okay, Mustafa, we are we've, struggling we've for, got not about, only, let me we've say got this, we are not struggling left. only for the freedom uh, of Palestine. Right, we've got about four minutes left, so I'm going to try okay, and do this please. as fairly as possible. Two minutes to Mordecai and two minutes to Mustafa, so we try and keep the balance. Mordecai, if the state please of Israel that. escorts a, a group of settlers, including I, I the current question. government be, 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 minister, could I just ask you this question? If the state of Israel, do, do, I want to steer this away from too much history of 3,000 years ago, if the current uh, state of Israel, or the state of Israel, escorts Jewish settlers and the current Minister of Agriculture, someone who has been quoted by Israeli publications as calling for a Jewish temple to be built where the Al-Aqsa Mosque now stands. Is that not something you would expect to be seen as a provocative stance when they're escorted inside what Muslims call the Haram al-Sharif area rather than staying in the Western Wall where Jews pray? If I were the Palestinians, I would bring him a, a table with, uh, with the drinks in order to show that they are the masters of the place. They are stupid. But I, I want to ask something. Jordan was occupying Jerusalem between 1948 and 1967 for 7,000 days. Why did not Jordan give a Palestinian state to the Palestinians with Jerusalem, or is Jerusalem as its capital? What did the Jordanians, who today advocate the Palestinian state, why did not they give a Palestinian state to the, Palestine, the so-called Palestinians with Jerusalem, or is Jerusalem as its capital? What did they know about the non-existence of a Palestinian people of those days, which they do not know today? And Barghouti should answer this question. Why did not Jordan establish a Palestinian state between 1948 and 1967? I'm going to give Mustafa an opportunity then to come in. You've got about, what, a minute and a half as well left. Go ahead, Mustafa. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, the question is not to Jordan, the question is to Israel. Why, according to the partition plan, Israel should have been in 54% of the land and Palestine in 44%. Israel claimed that it accepted the resolution, but in 48, it occupied 78% and dispossessed 70% of the Palestinians, which are now 6 million refugees living abroad. Israel took the actions to prevent the establishment of a Palestinian state. And that's why they continue the same policy. But let me say one thing more, which is more important. Today, the occupation, which has been there for 47 years, have become a full-fledged system of apartheid and racial discrimination. We've suffered from disposition for 68 years, from occupation for 47 years, from a system of apartheid today, and we will not accept that. We, we, we are determined to be free. We are determined to be independent. And when we struggle, for our freedom. We are not only struggling for the freedom of the Palestinian people. Actually, we are trying to struggle to free the Israelis themselves from this system of apartheid, including Mr. Kedar. He does not understand that racism and discrimination against other people cannot survive. The only thing that can survive are the principles of freedom, okay. dignity, and human rights. And we are determined to get our freedom. We are determined, and we will get it. OK, we'll have to leave it there for now. I know that this discussion can go on for perhaps as long as it already has, if not more. But we will leave that for another day. For now, let's uh, thank our guests, Mustafa Barghouti and Mordecai Kedar. And thank you, too, for watching. Of course, you can contact us by going over to our program page on our website, aljazeera.com. You can also leave a comment on facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. Or you can tweet us at AJ Inside Story. From me, Sami Zaydan, and on behalf of the whole team here for now, it's goodbye.